Hey guys, Stealth here, welcome back to Shipyard Champions, our weekly tournament for Ultimate World Dreadnoughts. Uh, before we look at the task for today, let me show you the seasonal scoreboard. We're really quite close. 29 points for Panzergraf, Lost Galaxy Gamer 28, we have myself and Eularia 27, Polar and Wolf, and uh, is that Brother Monroe? No, it's Bro Silly at 26, and Brother Monroe at 19. So, um, I only need two points, and, well, make sure that Panzergraf doesn't get any. <laughs> in order to advance. Anyway, today's task. Super Dreadnoughts, as sent in by Brother Monroe. The year is 1915, range is at least 20 clicks. You can increase if you wish. The weather is clear, the time is morning. Okay. I get one battleship. The enemy is going to depend on your choice. If you're fighting Britain, then it's five battle cruisers against one BB. Okay. If you're fighting Germany, it's one battleship and three battle cruisers. Yikes. I can be France, Italy, or Austria-Hungary. If you chose France, so if I pick this, the enemy is that. If I pick Austria-Hungary, the enemy is Britain with her five battle cruisers. If I pick Italy, I can decide who I want to fight. Okay, uh, design. It has to be a super dreadnought with at least 14-inch guns and a top speed of 24 knots or greater. Otherwise, you're free to design the ship as you wish. Call cool for aid, optionally. So, <laughs> most likely I'm not going to do that. You can call in reinforcements. The following ships are available. Single BC, two armored cruisers, three protected or scout cruisers, five DDs. You can call in any of these ships, or all of them, and each group is going to cost you one point. If you call them in at the... If you call all of them in, you start at minus four points. You may not design them. Yeah, they're to be AI designed. I do not trust the AI to design anything. Scoring! After an hour of in-game time, so make sure you do it well, you last an hour. Uh, if your battleship's still afloat, <laughs> you're not dead. Five points. If you only have minor damage, which is structural buff 75, with no red and black icons, you get an additional two. If you sink the enemy BC, you get one point. If you uh, per per BC, okay, so we gotta sink them all. If you sunk the entire enemy battle group. Oh, wait, if you sink the battleship, that is this one, Germany. Right. Yeah, okay, that makes sense, because then you got two points for the battleship and three points for the battle cruiser, so you still get five, and for Britain, it's also five single points. Excellent. If a reinforcement group is totally destroyed, you lose one point. So if you bring five, uh, yeah, hmm. It's going to be tricky, this one. Whatever you design is going to have to be very, very sturdy because you can be taking fire from five ships. Or th four, but potentially one with even bigger guns. Okay, let's open up the game and see what I can design. Alright, before I get to the design, I first have to decide what my strategy is going to be. There's five enemy battle cruisers. Let's say they have two barrels each per turret times... Three, maybe four turrets? So that's 40 barrels that I'm looking at. Um, even if I bring a ton of armor, I'll probably not be able to take the hits. If they are able to accurately land hits in 1915, that's a question. So I'm thinking Italians because I get to pick if I want to decide, if I want to fight the British or the Germans. I want to fight the British and the five BCs because BCs tend to be a little easier to sink than the battleships and I'm hoping with Italian speed because they tend to have faster ships I might be able to dictate the range of the engagements so I can say no we are not going to fight at I don't know 15 kilometer range we're going to do it at 22 23 24 because at that range I'll be able to decide how to fight and ideally I'll be able to dish out the damage without taking it so, 20,000 meter range, I'm pretty happy with in 1915. It's not 1950. You're not going to land a 20 inch shell at that range. 1915, 20 kilometers is fine. Um, dreadnought. How fast are you, Dreadnought? Top speed, 22 knots. Yes. Um, I can go 24 knots at least, is the requirement. Because it says here. The design must have at least 14-inch guns with a top speed of 24 knots or greater. 
Yeah, the problem is making that greater part work. Because let's say these ships aren't the most hydrodynamic designs, <laughs> not yet. So we're gonna have to try and get something that can actually go fairly quick. Uh, yeah. Tricky. The fast dreadnought can do it. Like, if I want to go, oh, I don't know, uh, 27 knots. That could work on this ship, because it has a different hull form. It has a 78 hull form, this one has... Hold on, this has an 86, but its maximum optimal speed is less? Really? Hull form is generally what you're looking for when you're trying to get a pretty quick ship. But this thing displaces 19,000 tons and has those really weird side mounts. You can park a side mount 14 incher? Not on that ship. Okay, never mind. We're going back to D uh, Dreadnought 4. Because the other one's just not going to work out. Let's say 27 knots. And we're going to go gear turbines. I do prefer oil. Saves me a ton of weight. I want basically all the best gear. Uh, we're going to stick to some medium range. Make her a lot bigger. And see what I can get. 53 long range accuracy. That's a nice looking tower. How big are your guns? Oh, they're also 14s. Okay, fine. Rear tower. Anything with accuracy? Base accuracy... I think long range accuracy. Yeah, here. Rear tower 8. That's long range accuracy. This one does not. What? <laughs> this tower. You'd think this tower would give you better view. And with it, the capability of getting better range. But nope, it's this one. Oh, well, sorry, it's not better range. It's better long range accuracy bonus. Base accuracy plus 10. Base accuracy plus 9. And it weighs less. Damage control? 15, 14. I get less smoke interference. Wow. Okay. Definitely this one. Now, let's see. How many funnels am I going to need? Because this is going to require a hefty amount of propulsion to make work. Oh! Okay. Well, that fixes that. And this is probably not even the most efficient one. You get a 62 funnel capacity for 600 tons. Uh, I don't care about the tonnage that much. But... If I pick... Like something like that... I can make it a really small engineering section. And I can even go with forests and then I have pretty good engine efficiency. So that's good. I like it. Now then. Torpedo belt. I don't really care about a torpedo belt. Because at 27 knots, I'm going to stay very far away from the torpedoes. I care not to be introduced to torpedoes. No. Um, I got better closures chasing me, right? What about... What about, what about... Stern heavy build. Is that feasible? Oh, not bad. Not bad. Okay, so this is going to go here. Here... Surely not. <laughs> Would have been too good if that was possible. But alas. What? Really? Huh. Interesting. Not useful for what I'm trying to do. But it's interesting nonetheless. They got all sorts of fancy new barbettes. Yeah, because that looks normal. 
No. We're not doing that. Very tall superimposed barbette. Oh. Oh, really? Like, how superimposed? I have questions. I have a lot of questions. Ah. You need to be super superimposed there. I don't need a very tall one. I need, like, an extremely tall one. Super tall, Barbette. Hey! You. You're gonna look mightily out of place here, but that's fine. Forward. Ship's not wide enough. Fine, we'll make her wide enough. Increase the beam. There. Now I can shift the main tower a bit. And do this. And then say, I want this super tall skyscrapery thingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. And then I want a normal-ish. Oh, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere, but... Wait. Still? I have a four weight offset problem? Come on. Okay, we're gonna have to do this a little different. Uh, can I get like a medium here? Ooh, it doesn't quite like that. But supposedly this thing will fire over it. Considering the firing arcs. So... No way! That's... what? That works? That would be spectacular. So I can... S <laughs> I can sail away from the enemy. Uh, and I can pound them with... A whole... Pyramid of firepower. And this one might actually be able to get a little lower. Not that low, though. Bit more? Standard superimposed per bet? No, it's too tall. All these per bet choices that we get nowadays. Yeah, now this won't fire. Okay, so the previous solution was the best solution, I guess. So that was like the medium superimposed for bad, I think the standard one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, cool. I have a 60% four weight offset. But if I remove that turret, I no longer have that problem. Um, yeah, I think this is a perfectly normal looking ship. Fight me if you think otherwise. And we're going to go two powder. S increase that. Citadel three. Well, there's not a whole lot we can do better. Reload, 72 seconds. Yikes. Range, 20 clicks. Okay. So we will have to get closer. Stereo to get additional long range accuracy bonuses, spot torpedoes, get better gun aiming speed, better recon. Uh, let's get an auxiliary engine in here. Make it faster. No, not that much faster. 29? Where's the magic cutoff point? I think it's like 29.5 or something. Yeah. Okay, so maybe 28. Still really fast for this era. And then add armor. I have a four weight offset, believe it or not. So I can probably put a whole lot of armor on the stern. Give me two inch superstructure. Give me a five inch stern belt. Uh, 15-inch conning tower. Like, 15 inches side armor on the turret. 
I'll take eight inches on the top. And when it comes to my stern deck, I'll take five. That's a bit much. Reduce the four belts. Nobody's ever going to see the four belt if I play the ship well. Uh, one, one, we've got 40 tons left. How can I use that 40 tonnage? No. No. Bit less. There we are. Okay. Uh, so this is the uh, reverse Emilio. <clears throat> For no particular reason. 37,000 ton battle dreadnought in reverse. Because why not? This is the Ministry for Weird Designs, so off we go. Well, this <clears throat> is less than ideal. I don't think I set the conditions right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to reload the battle. Because the conditions are supposed to be clear morning. This is not that. Give me a second. This is better. I can actually see the targets. Let's see the targets for real. Um, I see you like your turrets. Would you like a turret with your turret? Because we got turrets all over the place, dog. What is this? That's ten barrels per ship. <laughs> oh, uh, there's five of those guys, somewhere. So that's 50 guns. Are they rotating? Yep, so they got range too. What the hell is your range on a 13? What? Okay. Well, that ought to be amusing. It's probably because I'm using Mark II and they're using Mark III. Well, well, well. Like, this is a work of art, right? They're to, Yeah. They're trying to destroy my work of art. I only have one hour of in-game time. So I would very much appreciate it if these guys were to come to me. Oh, I actually mistyped it into the Reversio Emilio. <laughs> oh, well. What? You can... <laughs> I guess the ship is really happy to see me. Okay. Um, if you guys could kindly come to me, that would be phenomenal. Because then I can turn and slow to full speed. And just target the leader, 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 target the leader. There we go. Accuracy. Someday. Come on. Six and a half percent. Now you're catching on. I want to see if this actually works. Because I still have doubts. <laughs> It looks so delightfully derpy. I think it won't actually work. But it's amusing. 7%. Seeing as I fire HLs, that's probably not enough. Six minutes of in-game time have passed. Both parties have to yet score a single hit. Load. Ooh, that got pretty close. 10% chance to hit. 11. Fire. When ready? You're not ready yet. Wait, what? I did not set my shells up correctly. Oh, I'm running max HE. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, 
I'm firing two shells. Where are the other six? It's just that third turret that fired. Fine. There's 17 clicks out. 19 clicks out. Oh, we hit him! Look at that! Boink! Ricochet. Can this thing hurt me? I think it will. Well, not very well. Not very well. Their accuracy is a bit concerning because those shells are coming pretty close pretty soon. I'd love to just not necessarily kill one of them, but maim it sufficiently so that it won't hurt me. That I can consider it, you know, temporarily out of the fight. Partial. That is deck belt. So there's not exactly a pattern yet. Whatever. Launch the HE at them. Launch the HE. Starboard turn, slight. <coughs> Took some damage there. We expect results? No, everything missed. Now, what I want these guys to do is chase me. Not go broadside in one big line formation. That's not how this is supposed to play out. Fine, I'll just use it as a slightly more conventional ship, because I only have 50 minutes left to make something happen. Come on. The hell? I thought I had a heck of a lot more accuracy a moment ago. Is it because of my engine vibrations? 8%? No, hardly. Well, they do decrease somewhat. Oh, damn it, we're out of range. Okay, come on. Have at it. We've done some damage, but it's, like, negligible. There's the accuracy. This is not how the ship was designed to be used. I have a four belt of three inches and a stern of five. This is not how I want the ship to behave. Uh oh. The Brits have a 0.1% chance to hit? Yes, yeah, the Mark III. Damn it. They got plenty of shells. They're not gonna run out, probably for the next, I don't know, two hours. Not with that rate of fire. 8% chance to hit. 9% for the Caledonia now. This is troublesome. Chance to pen? Hold. What?! What sort of a battle tank did you build? 0 0.14 belt, 0 0.1 aft belt. 7.5 inch superstructure? You what? And then you went 7.5 inch main and 4, and you completely decided to disregard the aft deck. So your aft deck is 2 inches or 0 0.2 inches thick? What the hell? Okay. It's just that these guys have a damn lot of firepower. Especially closing the distance is not going to be in my best interest. Um, 
destroy sun glare. Great. Do they have that too? No, they do not. There we go. Main belt, partial pen. At some point, I will take a pretty damaging hit. There's no other way around it. Twelve percent, sixteen percent. Come on, nothing. The accuracy for the British is absolutely atrocious. Point six. Mine is at least five times better. But these British guns are a joke. Holy shit, I'm vulnerable. Okay, we're gonna turn out. 34 minutes left. I have nothing to show for it. Thirty-four percent chance to hit. Now we're getting somewhere. Thirty-six, thirty-eight. Ooh, there's the damaging hit. Forty-three. And most of my guns didn't even fire. Partial pen. Come on, go right through that aft deck, if you will. Because that's where the damage is at. That's where these things are completely vulnerable. No. Not like that. I gotta say, this is a pretty uncomfortable ship to use. Because it sails all weird. Partial pen, main belt. How vulnerable are they to flooding? Not very. <laughs> Maximum bulkheads. Anti-flood one. Oh! That went through the main belt. 2,000 points of damage. They got a, a trained crew on there. Yeah, they still got hundreds and hundreds of shells. Oh boy. 5,000 points of damage? What did you do? Main belt pen. This equates to a massive citadel hit. I think we might actually take one of the battle cruisers out of the fight with that hit. Look at the size of that gap! What the fuck did you throw at that ship? That was ridiculous. Do it again. Finish off the Audacious, because that's 20% of their firepower gone. If we can pull it off. Audacious... Oh crap, she fixed her flooding. Oh, hello. Accidentally hit the Superb. Yes? No. Missed it. Can the Audacious still fire? I think she can, but she won't until all of her turrets are rotated the right way. Turret rotation looks very weird. Maybe because of acceleration or something, but that looked really weird. Come on, take out the Audacious. I want points. I need points. Sink her. No, not the superb. <laughs> We juke our speed. Would that help? Ricochets. Caledonia is only 12 clicks out. Four barrels only. How fast does this thing accelerate anyway? 
not very quickly. Okay, we're going to switch to Caledonia for a bit. I'm going to spread the love around and hope that I can come back to take out the Audacious later, but there's not a whole lot of later left. This thing slows down instantly. Did you destroy a main gun? Can't have that. That is really rude. And it also took out a lot of my AP shells. Oh boy. <clears throat> oh boy. Guess we're gonna have to switch to HE shells for a bit. Find AP opportunities and then use them. Because with a 0.1% chance of actually landing a pen hit, I'm not spending my AP shells on that. There we go, we're aimed, we're flooding. I can say goodbye to that 75% bonus. This is an awful design and definitely won't get me a lot of points. That's for sure. Flooding. Run! Switch the guns over to the Audacious. Maybe we can still finish her off. If I can actually manage to get the guns to fire. I'll summon them. This is going to be a really bad round for me, sadly. Oh no. More damage to the main gun. Come on, level that thing. Nothing. 13 minutes of in-game time left. Nothing. I vastly overestimated the ability of this ship to be able to deal damage. And the ability of the AI to, well, do completely the opposite of what I wanted it to do is astounding. Because I was expecting the AI to come chase me. They're sailing parallel to me. That's not what I wanted them to do. So here we are with a ship that is badly damaged. Mostly unable to fire due to the list that she's taking on. Um... I might make it another nine minutes if I don't flood. So try and blade yourself against incoming fire and try not to die. That's basically the extent of the strategy here. Seven minutes left. Yeah, they still got <laughs> well over 700 shells. We're not waiting them out. Oof. I can still do 17 nulls, which considering the flooding I've taken on is pretty impressive. Oh well, I'll not be using this design again, that's for sure. A few moments later, I only have nine seconds left on the clock. Four, two, and done. So, uh, the Reversio Emilio is still flooding, but we had to play for an hour of in-game time, which I have done. So now, um, scoring. After one hour of in-game time, if your battleship is still afloat, you get five points. It's still afloat. If your battleship only has minor damage, which is structure above 75%, yeah, no. Um, I get an additional two points, so no. If I sink an enemy BC, I get a point. Nope. If I sunk the enemy battleship, didn't have any. If a reinforcement group is totally destroyed, you lose one point. Summarily, I only got five points. Oof. I could have had a lot more. I could have had a lot more. 
Maybe going with a ship that had more secondaries would have made more sense. But then I'd also have to close the distance with these battle cruisers, and I didn't really feel like doing that. Running away is not something you're really supposed to do. Because you can just run away for five minutes, or sorry, for an hour. And then take the points, which is five plus two, but you're not allowed to do that. Monroe said that. So yeah, here I am. With just a measly five points. And the Reversio Emilio, largely destroyed. Be sure to check out the other guys. Link to down below in the description. See how they did. What weird and wonderful design choices they made. And whether or not they got more points. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I'll see you soon for more battles.